Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. It is with much regret that I have to tell you of the demise of my machine's hard drive. It's been with me for many years and has many customizations I could never hope to recreate. But fear not brothers and sisters for it shall be reborn. I have a backup. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the battery from this laptop. And that sits here, uh, the battery out of it. Next, I'm going to remove the hard drive. My one's held in by three little screws. And I know it's under this here because there's a symbol of a hard drive on it. And of course, I've been in here before. You'll need to consult your owner's manual as to where the hard drive is kept, but it's usually kept under a little cover like this here, or in a special tray like this one here. And this is nothing more than a standard two and a half inch laptop hard drive. And it's sitting in a carrier. There are four screws around the outside edge, which hold it into the carrier. Remove those screws and the drive will simply come out of it. One thing you do need to note is which way up it belongs in the carrier. So when it's sitting like this here in the carrier, this is the connector for the laptop in my case. This is an old IDE type connector, not the new SATA ones. And these pins here are for to set whether it's a master or slave. So you'll need to make sure it goes in the right way up. It won't fit properly if you put it the wrong way up. Okay, so that's the drive that goes in the bin, and this here I'll put the new drive into. Now with those parts removed, I'm now going to get some compressed air and I'm going to clean the laptop. I've got a screwdriver here, and here are the vents, the cooling vents for the laptop, and it's got some fans in there. I'm going to just put the screwdriver blade down into there until it just touches the fan, and now I can blow compressed air into it. Don't go overboard. I'm using about 50 pound. I just want to blow the air out, not destroy the laptop. Now, the reason I'm using a screwdriver to hold that fan is that if you blow the air into the fan, either through the vent or the fan itself, that fan will start winding up. And it'll end up running a lot faster than it was ever designed to run. Not only that, when it's turning by uh, the air is producing a voltage and the fan was never designed to run as a generator the laptop circuitry wasn't designed to dissipate power coming from the fan it's the other way around the laptop sends power to the fan so by blocking the fans from turning I can clean the laptop without having to worry about damaging the electronics in it this laptop has three fans. The other thing I'll clean is the keyboard. I've cleaned my keyboard recently so there's not a lot of dust in it. It's something quite handy to do if you are an air compressor because you get chips under there or dust under there you find that it doesn't run very well. With our laptop now clean we can install our replacement drive. I've already put it into the carrier it'll just slide in and with the three screws that came with it I'll secure it back into the laptop. Put the battery back in place. We're ready to go. With our laptop now clean and the new hard drive in place, we now need to install Windows. In my case, Windows XP. You need to reinstall the same version of Windows 
you had prior to your hard drive failure. I'm not going to show you how to install Windows. There are many excellent videos available online taking you through that process. We're going to pick up where we're ready to install Mac 3. Everything I need to reinstall Mac 3 is on this USB stick. The files I created before the system crashed. So let's have a quick look and see what's on it. I have here the Mac 3 folder, and this is the raw Mac 3 folder that I took off the original hard drive before it crashed. You can see all the files that make up Mac 3. I have here Mac 3 software, USB, my Smooth Stepper USB drivers, some plugins, and also the version of Mac 3 and my license for Mac 3. Last but not least, I have here my shortcuts. These were my desktop shortcuts, which I'd like back on my desktop. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them onto my desktop, and that's that done. Couldn't be much simpler than that. I'll just position them where I want. And these just go down here. And that's pretty much as it used to be. Next, I'm going to plug in my smooth stepper as I need to load the driver for it. You can see down here, it's found the driver, found the smooth stepper, and it's going to request my driver. So I'm going to go, no, I will supply my own driver, and I'll tell you where it is. And I'm going to browse to here, it was under Mac 3 software, smooth stepper driver. Now this is perfectly normal, just click continue anyway, and it will load the driver. And that, that's finished. I'll now plug in my USB handset, the, and you can see here, it's found the drivers for this here. And this one here won't request any drivers or the location of them. Windows already has them built in. The more observant of you will notice I'm running Windows XP, but I've updated it to Service Pack 3 before I started the install here. So now, it's time to install the Mac 3 software. You can see here why I put the shortcut up here first. So I'm going to go to the Mac 3 software, and here's the version I'm running. Double click on it. Next. Agree. And just keep clicking next. Until it actually starts to install. Now even though I'm not using the parallel port on my laptop, I am going to install the driver for it, because one day I may wish to use it, and if I do, it's already installed. We'll just close that, and now I'm going to go into the Mac 3 folder, and this is the Mac 3 folder that's now been installed onto my machine. So I'm just going to go folders, uh, no sorry not the E drive, the C drive, and there's Mac 3. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to go delete. And now I'm going to go to the E drive, and you'll see my Mac 3 folder here, I copy that. I'm going to go back to the C drive, and I'm going to paste it. And that will replace, basically, all the files 
that were loaded by the software initially. Now I know a lot of people might say that that's not the correct way to do it, but I found it's actually the quickest way to do it. Since I'm going, since I'm reloading exactly the same version I had before, on the same version of Windows I had before with the same drivers and everything, it doesn't seem to cause me any problems. And by far, this is the quickest method of doing it. And then we have it done. So if I'm right, Mac 3 should now open. I'll just click my hybrid icon here on the desktop. It gives me my splash screen. I've replaced it with my own custom splash screen for Mac 3. And now it's just requesting what version of plugin I wish to use. I'm going to use this version of the plugin. Click OK. And there it is, up and running. So let's see if it works. I'll select hybrid. And I'm going to select this Smooth Stepper plugin because this one's used by the rotary axis and will be tested when we do the rotary axis one. Okay, so we'll do the emergency stop first and it should reset that, which it has. So now we should do, be able to do a little bit of jogging. So I'm going to go uh, left, right, backwards, forwards, up, down. And that seems to be working good as gold. Now I can do uh, single step jogging by pushing this button and push it again it'll go back to continuous mode jogging so that's excellent that's working. We've also got uh, our jog rate if I go minus for the jog there and now try moving and it moves slowly that's good plus jog. So those are actually custom setups I did for uh, my particular Mac 3 set up. Uh, that's working fine. Feed rates, feed rate up, feed rate down, so that's working good as gold as well. If I go to origin point, that works good as well. And uh, zero to laser, perfect. So all that is working as it used to. We'll click the rotary axis profile. Right, so we'll push the emergency stop and the reset should go off when I take the manual reset off and it has I should be able to move the axis left and right I should also be able to move it up and down which I can let's see what happens when we try rotating and in the opposite direction that's excellent Again, feed rate up and down. We've got single step and continuous mode. That's working fine. And jog rate. So if I set that to the smaller jog, it's moving very slowly. And faster jog rate, it's moving quicker. That basically looks like that's all working as well. Could it really get much simpler than that? I don't think so. A few minutes spent creating this USB backup drive has literally saved me hours in the workshop trying to recreate my machine settings, the rotary axis settings, and the laser screw settings. Now, a word of warning, don't try using this method if you're trying to reinstall Mac 3 on a different version. It won't work. 
there's a different method you need to use for that. And in a later video, I'm going to show you how I created this drive. Well, I hope that helps, and you'll make your own backup drive before you find that uh, you've got a major problem on your hands. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers!